guys, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. Some of you may be on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Echo, TJ's Path. So I'm recording this at night. You guys know how it goes. It's going to be a little quieter. So guys, let's go ahead and just jump right back in, shall we? Please sit back and enjoy for the next 18 minutes. We'll entertain you and let's jump right in. Alarm chain, you are up and let's go. And I hope you all have a wonderfully pleasant night. Even though you'll be... Actually, yeah, you'll be probably be watching this, uh... You'll be probably be watching this tomorrow evening. Anyway, <clears throat> okay. I hiss out the side of my mouth. Staring out the windshield again. He seems reluctant to, though looking concerned. Janice, do you need some help? His tone is one you might use on a toddler or a crazy person. I don't hear her say anything, except maybe a grunt. Leo bravely keeps trying, though. We can give you a ru- Leo stops talking in time for me to hear a pattering sound. It's a sound I recognize well from back when I would take a piss on the dirt roads of Echo when no one was around. The van lurches forward, then resumes a smoother acceleration by back onto the empty road. Holy sh- Holy shit, what the fuck was that? I don't... Leo's frowning, looking as confused as I've ever seen him. Should, should, should I should I go back? No! I look back and see TJ covering his face. Maybe, maybe, she could have been having some kind of psychotic episode. Or maybe she just had to piss. I don't think so. Did you see the way she looked at me? She's probably just on, on something, isn't everyone? No, she doesn't do stuff like that. Well, maybe she does. You never know with people. Again, Leo doesn't say anything, and neither does anyone else. I glance back at TJ, who's sitting on the very in the very back seat with Jenna. He's got his ears down, looking in, looking into his lap, where he's fidgeting with his hands. I know he's probably thinking the same thing I am, which is that we're supposed to help Janice with her spot with her spring cleaning or whatever. I want to ask him about it, but the dead silent van is making me feel like now isn't the best time. Fucking told you. Leo stabs the doorbell again, frustration etched across his face. Can you please keep the cursing down just a little bit? I can't help but notice TJ wince at every F-bomb. He's been keeping his distance from Flynn, always standing on the opposite side of our little group. I shift the bag I'm carrying around in my hands, trying to look through the frosted glass on the sides of the door. Maybe he's getting high? He should still be able to hear. I mean, maybe he just doesn't want to? TJ holds up his phone. He's not answering his phone, either. Oh, God, my nose. Oh, God, my nose. Oh, it's scrunching up like I'm about to sneeze. Oh, okay, it's gone. All right. <clears throat> Leo knocks on the door hard, his bicep bulging. Well, I guess breaking the door might get us inside. <clears throat> Leo stands back, paws on his waist as he takes a deep breath. He's determined. And I guess he should be, considering he set all this up. We should have just told him to meet us at the diner or something. Do they, do they lock their windows? What? Leo growls. It's not like we're breaking in. TJ's ears pin back, a frown on his face. The wolf puts a paw to his forehead, closing his eyes. Sorry, but I think he's just asleep, and it shouldn't be too hard to just get in there and wake him up. I look over at the side of the house and see a window well. I point at it. What about that? Too small. I could probably fit. She hops off the front porch and crouches down next to the window, pushing at it. Wait, there's a security sticker here. Well, you got our Aunt Arm at first, and Carl's such a lazy ass I know he didn't. Besides, if we set it off, we can just run. It's not like they'll show up anytime soon. Jenna hesitates and pushes at the window again, but it doesn't budge. Locked. Let's try the one above it. That's too high. <clears throat> <clears throat> Sorry, guys, allergies got my throat dry. I'll boost you up. I think this is going a little too far. Leo ignores him and stands next to the window before making a plat making a platform for Jenna's foot with his paws. Steadying herself with her paws against the wall of the house, Leo easily lifts Jenna and she manages to grab the ledge. Fucking hell, this is so fucking stupid. Flynn mutters next to me, but I ignore him. Jenna pushes against the window and it glides open easily. Yes, now I'm going to boost you all the way up. Hold on. <clears throat> Careful. Like there's some kind of cheerleading duo, Leo shoves Jenna all the way up with one paw and she disappears through the window. Her bush tail is the last thing we see until she pokes her head back through. Kitchen, I found the sink. Great, I unlock the door. She disappears again and we make our way back to the front door. Leo, you're fucking crazy. If you don't shut your fucking mouth, Flynn, I'll kick you right in your vag. Un sound good? Jesus, calm your... Leo turns on him, one foot in front of the other. But Flynn shuts up. TJ's eyes are wide, even though he's staring down at the steps. I want to put my arm around him. Finally, we hear the door rattling, and it opens. He called his name, but he didn't answer. 
Well, he's gotta be here. It's not like he can go anywhere or would want to. Carl's house is as massive and immaculate as I remember it. It is a mansion, after all. Well, maybe less immaculate than I remember. There are a few wrappers and pizza boxes on the marble counter. I assume that's because Carl's parents aren't here to tell him, tell him not to be a slob. Flynn immediately heads up the stairs. Yo, Carl! I set the bag down on the table and, sit, and TJ sets the cake there, too. I look over at him. You alright? I'm good. Why? Just asking. So... I rub the back of my head, trying to think of how to bring it up. What is it? Um... Janice. Oh, yeah. TJ mirrors my pose, rubbing behind his own head. I'm actually really worried about her. I mean, should we still go? TJ looks at me, surprised. Of course, especially now. We need to make sure she's okay. Oh, yeah, maybe we should. I actually don't feel like we need to do that at all, considering she's probably just really, really high. I was going to suggest that we could at least postpone the visit until tomorrow so she had time to calm down. But TJ's shock at my suggestion is me holding my tongue for now. Chase. Chase, you check in the back. TJ, downstairs. He barks at us before hustling past toward the hallway. We both look at each other before I shrug and head for the back door. I stare out the glass window on the door for a while, wonder why Carl would, e would even be out there. The old play the old playset with the swings is gone, and so is the treehouse that it used to be in one of the two trees. The branch near the base of the tree that we used as a step has been cut away too. Carl and I used to play up in that treehouse all the time when we were younger. I open the doors and step out onto the concrete steps. I feel a pang of sadness seeing it gone. I had a lot of memories up there. I can remember the day when we started building it. I mean, Carl's dad had built the base of it, but left the rest up to us. Duke, the old weasel, had a pile of random junk in his backyard, and he gave us permission to take from it as long as we cleaned it all up. I told TJ that if we cleaned up the, pi up the, up the pile, my dad would take us to the movies that night. He pretended to help clean up, even though we were just taking what we wanted for the treehouse. We hauled it away in a wagon, telling TJ that we were taking it to the, cor to the corner for recycling or something, and that he should keep going. Of course, we didn't go back. I don't know why. I don't know why I thought we'd get away with that. Apparently TJ was there for three more hours before Duke came out and found out what had happened. I was grounded for the longest that I'd ever been. I cringe and close my eyes, face getting hot at the memory of being forced to apologize to TJ. Fucking asshole. I mumble it to myself. We were especially cruel to TJ those couple of years. It was probably because of the age difference. Me and Carl had been ten. TJ was eight. For some reason, two years feels like two decades when you're that old. Still, there isn't really an excuse for how shitty I was to him. Even after what happened, we never let him we never let him up into the treehouse. I was a really shitty kid, but I know TJ doesn't hold it against me. Still, the idea of taking advantage of TJ's trusting nature is so is just so terrible. Okay, so right click doesn't do anything in this game. Well, it doesn't do anything good. I saw give me the rest of the yard a cursory glance, even though I know Carl's not out there. I'm a little worried, but I'm sure there's some sort of explanation for where he's gone. I turn back around, deciding to help with the search inside. I just want to see a flash of a fat orange and gray tail disappearing down the down the downstairs down the downstairs steps. I blink. Jenna walks past. I'm gonna go look in the garage. I don't think he's even in the house, though. Okay. As Jenna heads for the garage door, I head for the stairs. The cool air wafting up from the dark hallway ahead of me is a marked contrast to the heat from outside. I fan out my shirt a bit as I look at the multiple doors lining the hallway. The only open one is at the end of the hall, though I can hear a low voice coming from it. It's Flynn's for sure. As I head up to the opening, I can start to make out what he's saying. Huh? Wow, that's weird. Okay. But I just wanted to know. You, but I just wanted you to know that I'm not mad at you. Okay? I don't hear a response as I stand just outside the door. From here, I, all I can see here is a few cardboard boxes and a neatly made bed that probably hasn't been touched in years. I guess storage room? Come on, man, I'm just, I'm trying. I was mad yesterday, and I shouldn't have fucking sent that. Flynn's voice comes from further into the room, on my left. I grip my teeth, wavering between going in now or just hoping for the best and letting it play out. I need to go. I was just trying to figure out. Don't. I hear some rustling in the room, and that's when I realize that I have to step in. I hold on to the doorframe as I poke my head in. Flynn is TJ backed up against what looks like a doors to a closet. TJ is cowering in the corner while Flynn has a hand on the Lynx's shoulder, grabbing onto the fabric of his shirt. TJ's ears are pinned flat against his head, and he's looking up at Flynn with a grimace, and his eyes flick to mine as he notices me. Let me talk for a second. 
Flynn notices TJ staring over his shoulder and he jerks his head in my direction. The second he sees me, his hand drops away from TJ's shoulder. We stared at each other for a few seconds and I swallowed loudly. Uh, you guys find Carl? The question sounds all the more stupid in the dead silence that follows. Flynn's gaze drifts, over, drifts to the wall over TJ's head where he stares coldly for a few seconds, his jaw working furiously. I start to worry he's summoning up another one of his tantrums. Instead, after about five seconds, he turns on his heel and stalks out of the room. I have to move out of the way as he brushes past me. When I look back into the room, TJ's already moved to stand in front of a mirror on the wall. He straightens out his fur, then vigorously combs the fur on his face. He does a weird back and forth on his cheek ruffs with one of his hands, even though they look fine to me. TJ? Hmm? TJ snaps his head in my direction, one of his ears twitching. Are, are you okay? I'm okay. TJ says it fast and loud, giving his shirt one last tug. Let's keep looking for Carl. He makes a point of looking around the room. I don't think he's here. As he moves past me to leave the room, I grab his arm. He jumps and looks back at me, eyes wide. I quickly let him go, realizing just how closely I'm mimicking what Flynn had done just a minute ago. Do you want to talk? No! I blink in surprise. No, I don't want to talk about it. S sorry. His ears are down again and he's looking at the floor. Let's, let's just keep looking. He turns away again, but I feel like I should, stay, I should say something more. I want to make him feel better. Get him away from Flynn. Do you want to go for a walk or something? TJ turns back around to stare at me questioningly. I mean, to keep looking for Carl. He's not in the house, so maybe he's gone out somewhere around town? TJ nods in understanding, the distressed look melting off his face. Oh, that could be a good idea. We should tell Leo. I feel a surge of relief at having been able to distract TJ, and now I want to keep, keep doing that and keep that going. Luckily, we don't see Flynn on the way out. A distracted and frustrated Leo quickly waves us off as, we, as he continues his search in the ground floor bedrooms. Probably got high and passed out somewhere, he mutters absentmindedly as, as we head out the door. I immediately realize what a bad idea it is when I step out into the sun. TJ, on the other hand, brightens up the second we step out of the mansion. That, at least, makes me feel a little bit better. We walk in silence for the first, ten minute, for the first few minutes, looking at the rolling hills and mountains, cactus and sagebrush. It's one of those days where I'm not sure if the heat is worse coming from coming from the sun above me or the or the baking black asphalt under my feet. How's school going for you? I blink out of my burning alive trance and try to focus on the question. Oh, it's okay. Just kind of tedious, you know. At the same time, I get a pang of panic realizing how much work still needed to be done on my project. I'm able to convince myself that I still have half the week. I'll figure something out. What about you? It's great. Athletic training, right? Yep. So, what exactly do you do? Train people for sports? TJ laughs. Well, it's more to do with injuries, recognizing them, preventing them, treating them if I can. I didn't know that's what you do. So, are you like a doctor or something? He laughs again, but it, but like always, TJ is able to do it in a way that you know he's not laughing at you. Definitely not. That'd be really hard. I guess you could say an athletic trainer is a healthcare professional. Cool. Cool. I try to keep from panting. I thought, I thought you would have been more into, like coaching or something. You like sports. TJ shakes his head. No, I'd be terrible at that. I can't yell at people at all. I can't yell at people all day. Is there even a degree for coaching? I think most people that want to coach just get a teaching degree in history so they can teach. <laughs> I make air quotes. At a high school, while also coaching, uh, coaching, they teach to coach. Oh yeah, that's how it was at your school. At our school. I step, in, I step on a particularly sharp rock and bite my lip to keep from yelping. I really just wanted to do something involving athletics. Do you like it, the whole athletic training thing? Yeah, well, it is my first year, so who knows, but I think I do. So you just like helping people? That and I just like sports. TJ is quiet for a second. It probably sounds silly, but it seems to make life that seem more simple. Sports? Yeah, or exercising. There's a goal and something in your, in your way, like the other team, or a big hill. TJ kicks a pebble up from the ground and catches it at the top of his foot before launching it down the road. And your only job is to get around is to get around that to get to your goal. The Lynx laughs. I don't know if that makes any sense. I think it does. I'm kind of like that with the uh, video games, I guess. I can see that. I try to kick a pebble up onto the roof with my foot like TJ did, but I end up just kicking it off the side of the road. How did you do that? Oh, I just got lucky that time. Usually it doesn't work. I am on the soccer team, though. I think about how I didn't even bother trying out for the, my dad's swim team for, uh, for otters. I already knew how mediocre I was. But I also like being on the side of a field with all the cheering and lights. It's fun. 
As we continued down the road, we walked past the charred foundations of an old trailer. While the brush has mostly grown back, scorched earth and black sagebrush skeletons still remain. At that moment, my phone goes off when I pull it out, having to cut my hand over the top so I could see the screen under the bright sun. It's a text from Leo. <laughs> the hand animation. <laughs> found him. Hey, they found Carl. Oh, where? He didn't say, they just... That they found him. Well, that's great. Yeah. I smile as a little ball of tension in my chest that I didn't even know was there dissipates. Great. Where was he? I look back over my shoulder at the mansion resting at the, ba at the base of the mountains, the distance and heat making it hazy. I really don't want to walk all the way back. Maybe he just took a walk, a walk like us and got back? Maybe. A phone buzzes in my hand as I get another response from Leo. No party Carl isn't feeling good. I frown. What? What? Said Carl isn't feeling good, so there's not going to be a party? I thought he called him No Party Carl. <laughs> oh! TJ looks back at the mansion with me, airing out his shirt with both hands while he does. As much as it sucked for me to be under the sun, it's always worse for TJ with that thick fur. I copy him, airing out my own shirt, starting to feel self-conscious again about my musk. Should we head back? I hope he's okay. I think about all the shitty tension going on back there in Grimace. I don't know. We could do something else. TJ appears to think, his hands on his hips. And his face lights up. Hey, Genesis' house is right down the road. We can head. We can get a head start on the work. Oh. I'd almost forgotten about that. Well, I definitely planned to go. I didn't, want to, I didn't want to now under this heat. TJ jumps in place like he's warming up for a game. It'll feel good to do something after sitting around all day. I stare at TJ, absolutely baffled by his enthusiasm. What? I mean, well... First of all, it's work. Second, aren't you worried about how she's going to be when we get there? I stared down at the road at the approximate spot where we'd seen her just an hour ago. She's not there now, obviously, but the memory still sends chills up my spine. Well, I don't want to make sure I do want to make sure that she's okay. I don't know. We should give her at least a few hours to re recover. TJ's TJ stops bouncing and rubs his arm. Sorry, um if you don't want to go, I if you don't want to, I can just go. I glare at him. Oh, don't guilt me. I'm not! I just don't want you to be mad at me! I stretch, feeling sweat trickling down the sides of my face. We could wait until evening, at least. Ah, um, yeah, I guess we could do that. The disappointment on TJ's face is so obvious, there's no way he's not doing it on purpose. Okay, so what if she opens the door and she's still got her pants down? TJ blanches. Chase! I'm just saying, that's what could happen. There's no telling what she's on. Janice isn't like that. Alright guys, I'm gonna pause it right here. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Leave a super thanks or a tip if you can. It always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!